Hi, James Whiffen for AE Tuts, and today we are going to be talking about motion blur. Everything to do with motion blur. We'll be talking 2D motion blur, 3D motion blur, motion vectors, and force motion blur. So first off, what is motion blur? Well, the definition of motion blur is the appearance of streaking captured in a still image. If an object moves far enough in the time that the camera's shutter is open, it will have some degree of motion blur. And the longer that shutter is open, the more chance there is for motion blur. So if you filmed a scene with 1 50th of a second shutter speed, that scene will have a lot more motion blur than if you had have shot it at 1 500th of a second shutter speed. So when should motion blur be used? Well, in motion graphics, you'll want motion blur pretty much on every object that's traveling fast enough to acquire motion blur. Um, motion blur in motion graphics turns this very jumpy, uh, stroby shot into a very fluid and smooth shot, as you can see here. Our eyes are used to seeing motion blur pretty much everywhere in movies and TV shows, and it's even in real life. We see it with our eyes. So when we don't see motion blur, and we see an object that's moving fast enough that it should have motion blur, but it doesn't, our brain immediately knows that something is wrong. But this can actually be a creative decision, like in the film Saving Private Ryan, where the director Steven Spielberg deliberately set his cameras to use a lower shutter angle and therefore reduce the motion blur. And it turns these very intense action scenes into a very surreal, fast-paced experience, which I think works really, really well. To achieve this look at home, simply set your shutter speed high enough to remove any motion blur. Uh, for reference, Saving Private Ryan was shot at a shutter speed of 1 198th of a second. And the reason for that is on film cameras, they use shutter angles instead of shutter speeds. But you could just set your shutter speed to 1 200th of a second to get pretty much the exact same look. Most other films shot at uh, 24 frames per second use a shutter speed of 1 48th of a second. And uh, to any of us who use digital cameras and uh, are using the manual modes, changing the shutter speeds ourselves, that, that might seem quite low. And it, in one respect, it is quite low. Uh, if you were to pause any uh, film or TV show that you're watching, you might be surprised to see how much motion blur there actually is. When played at 24 frames a second, it'll look smooth, but we're really missing out on a lot of detail here that's just completely smudged by motion blur. This is why people like Peter Jackson are experimenting with shooting 48 frames per second to reduce motion blur, but without it having the Saving Private Ryan strobing look. Because as we can see here from this clip, no motion blur at 24 frames per second looks incredibly jarring, whereas when we play video games at 60 frames per second, no motion blur looks totally fine. It's totally smooth due to the high frame rate. Depending on your occupation, you'll probably either love motion blur or hate it. Typically, motion graphics designers love it because it makes their work look very smooth and fluid. Compositors generally like it as well because we can hide so many imperfections in motion blur. But people like match move artists absolutely hate it because it makes their work so much harder. Now, how do we know how much uh, motion blur to use? If we have a composition in After Effects and hit Control K to get to the comp settings, we can actually tell After Effects how much motion blur we'd like. In the Advanced tab, we can see that it's measured in the shutter angle instead of shutter speed. And by default, it's set to 180 degrees. And I find this is really great for motion graphics work. I never change it for that. Uh, if you found that you needed more motion blur uh, in your motion graphics work, you could increase this. And if you need less motion blur, decrease this number. Uh, when doing live action compositing, you want to have the same amount of motion blur in your uh, CG elements as that you do in your live action elements. And to do that, you just tell After Effects what shutter angle you used when filming the scene. Um, people don't usually measure it in shutter angle anymore, we use shutter, uh, shutter speed. And there's a pretty simple way to convert between the two. So I'll just fire up Calculator, and just say I had a scene that was filmed at 25 frames per second. You simply times that by 360, and then divide it by your shutter speed. So maybe I had a shutter speed of 1 100th of a second. So I can determine that at 25 frames per second, at 1 100th of a uh, second shutter speed, the shutter angle that I had was 90. So now I could change this to 90, and uh, my After Effects uh, motion blur would be set to the exact same amount as my live action footage, which would be great. Now let's talk a little bit about how computers simulate motion blur. I've just got this uh, 
diamond that is uh, running across the screen. If I turn on motion blur in the settings and also on the layer, we can see that I have my motion blur. And the way that After Effects is generating this motion blur is, uh, first of all, it knows which direction this diamond is headed based on my two keyframes. It's interpolating between the two, so it knows that it's going from left to right. And uh, what it does is it takes a copy or an instance of this uh, diamond, many instances of it, and uh, blends them from completely opaque to transparent in the direction that it's going. And the quality of this motion blur that we see here is determined by how many times After Effects instances it, uh, the diamond. And uh, that is determined in our comp settings. So currently it looks very smooth. If we go Control K Advanced, currently it's actually using only 16 samples per frame, but it says down here that that's on 3D layers, shape layers, and certain effects. 2D layers automatically use more samples up to the adaptive sample limit. So After Effects could be using up to 128 uh, instances of this diamond to generate this nice looking motion blur. I definitely don't think it's using that many in this particular scene, but if you had, uh, if we, for instance, reduce the amount of keyframes between here, we can see that After Effects has used a lot more samples. And you can actually change these settings here if you need higher quality motion blur. I think this is uh, normally fine. Um, when doing some 3D layers, 16 is often a little too small, but um, again, motion blur is quite expensive to compute. So increasing this, I might just increase this uh, before a final render to get a really high quality motion blur. Now the shutter phase, let's take a look at this. Uh, if I hit cancel here and uh, turn off motion blur, we can see that it's actually in a completely different spot to where the um, where it is without motion blur. And the shutter phase controls this. If we go to advanced and change the shutter phase, this is emulating the shutter on a film camera uh, where it uh, starts closed and then opens and then closes again. It's uh, like the diagram we showed before. So we can actually change this if we like, set it to 180 and we'll see that this actually moves to a different position again. And if we change this to zero, sort of closer to where it uh, originated. So I like to keep this uh, shutter phase at zero degrees so that my motion blur uh, sort of is uh, closer to where my non-motion blur is so I get a better idea of, uh, of where the layer will sit. Now 3D motion blur in programs like Maya and 3ds Max works pretty much the same way except instead of simple shapes, it has to generate samples from, you know, often complex 3D uh, geometry with reflections and things like that. So it often takes, uh, it always takes a lot longer to compute uh, motion blur in 2D and 3D. With After Effects' default motion blur, we can blur solids, shapes, and text, which is really cool. We can also blur in the X, Y, and Z direction, as well as the X, Y, and Z rotation, as we can see here. The default motion blur also works with a variety of particle systems. This one here is CC Particle World, and we can see that it looks cool with the uh, the motion blur. Maybe need a few more samples, but definitely looks a lot better than than that. Gee, uh, it also works with other particle systems like Particular, which is great. Create some really cool results with that. One of my favorite features for motion blur is using it in Roto. So. Here I have a scene where I need to roto the hand, separate it from the Lazy Susan. So I've just got this background solid here. We can see that uh, on this layer here, I've got my roto. Now you'll notice if I zoom in here, uh, with motion blur, I actually get motion blur based on the position of where this mask is. And it's not just the mask as a whole, it's each individual point as you animate them gets their own movement. And that can be really powerful. So you can see that I've only got one feather feathering here, but I'm getting this awesome motion blur based on the direction of that this mask is traveling and also where each individual point sits as they are animated. And uh, again, this can be controlled uh, through the advanced tab if we need some more motion blur, we can bump this up to 180 
and we're getting more motion blur. This is a really handy feat feature. Uh, just something to be wary of is if you have two masks, um, so for example, what I've done is realized uh, through this roto that I actually didn't, at this point, I didn't need to be rotoing all this uh, all this part of his hand, so I didn't want all these dead points tagging along. So I simply swapped the masks uh, to a simpler mask because I only needed to roto where the finger was, but the act of changing the position or swapping these masks uh, has actually screwed up the motion blur effect. So we can see here it's semi-transparent and completely transparent here when we have motion blur turned on. So a way to get around that would be during the time of the transition, simply duplicate it onto a separate layer that doesn't have motion blur. And then on the layers that you do want motion blur, just have those with motion blur. So with this solution, now we have turn on motion blur. We have the motion blur when we want it, but during the transition between the green and red mask, we don't have any motion blur, and that's uh, saving us from screwing up the mask, and then it transitions back to motion blur. So that's that use. Now let's take a look at uh, some places where After Effects default motion blur don't work. So if we have a look at this scene here, you can see all these little world of goo type creatures uh, jumping around the screen, and there is so much movement, there should be a lot of motion blur here. But if we turn on motion blur, we'll actually see that we're getting negative motion blur. It's actually like the reverse of motion blur. It's instead of blurring them out, it's sort of contracting the little goo balls. And um, if we have a look at the position, rotation, and scale of this layer, we can see that there isn't any movement. So After Effects can't add motion blur to this. It's like if only there was an effect that could sort of analyze this 2D footage and uh, predict which way the pixels are moving and then blur them based on their projected movement. Oh wait, there is an effect for that and it's called CC Force Emotion Blur. And uh, here it is, I'll just add it to this layer. And if we add it, we'll see that we get a problem. Um, the screen turns completely blank, it's a red solid, so it's reverted back to its original state. So CC Force Emotion Blur is going to give us motion blur based on what it thinks or where it thinks motion blur is needed but it's not really playing nicely with this effect here so what we need to do is pre-compose this uh, composition and I've done that here already so by pre-composing it CC force motion blur no longer has access to the CC Mr. Mercury effect and that's gonna if we add it now it's not gonna stuff up oh wait it is now the problem with CC Force Motion Blur, although we pre-composed this layer, it still somehow has access to CC Mr. Mercury, which is stuffing it up. And for that reason, when using Force Motion Blur with effects like Mr. Mercury, you actually need, instead of just pre-comping a layer, you actually need to render out the file. Um, so once you're happy with your goo balls, render it out as a, as a quick time or whatever you like to render it out as and then you can place that into your scene. So here's the uh, the pre-rendered goo balls. I'll just turn the previous layer off. You can see them here. They're in a quick time. And now we can apply force motion blur. And at its default setting, we actually don't get any motion blur. And that's because uh, force motion blur works with frame blending. So I've got frame blending turned on here and we can enable draft quality and we'll see that we are getting some motion blur but it's quite, um, I don't have alpha channel so I can't really emphasize it but it's quite bad looking. We can turn on to full quality here and there we're getting some really nice motion blur based on the what CC Force Motion Blur thinks is the direction of these uh, individual goo balls. So this is sort of fake, fake motion blur but it's really, really effective so you can see it's doing a really good job here. And the motion blur samples determines the quality. There's not too much motion blur here, so eight should be fine, but you can definitely increase the samples to increase the quality. And again, we have this shutter angle effect here, sorry, uh, setting here. So if we had to match uh, motion blur to live action footage, we know how to do that because we know how to convert our shutter speed to a shutter angle.